Uh, good morning and uh, welcome to Core Finance TV and uh, I, my name is Malcolm Graham-Wood and this is my CEO interview. Uh, today uh, my guest is James Menzies who is CEO of uh, Coro Energy. Good morning James, welcome, uh, welcome aboard. Thank First you, time welcome. you've joined us for this, uh, this one and uh, I'm really pleased to see you. There's, Great, uh, thank you Malcolm. Lots to talk about. As ever, I'd just like to begin with, if you could just give for those people who don't know that much about Coro, just an overview of the company. Yes, Coro is a small cap EMP, um, AIM listed. Uh, we have a production development base in Italy, which is, um, which is quite a small and modest um, size production base. Uh, produces gas mainly in the Po Valley. Um, it has a long history, you know, it's a result of merging together several companies, Sound and Saffron. Um, and from that we are launching into Southeast Asia. So really we're, we're a Southeast Asian business development company principally. Excellent. Now, you've been, you haven't been hanging around, you haven't been at, at Cora for very long, and of course your experience that, uh, that I know you from is with Salamander and all in Southeast Asia. Um, so why has Cora moved in that direction, away from Italy towards, uh, towards Southeast Asia? Yeah, uh, well, a couple of reasons. I think, first of all, Italy, whilst, you know, where you have production and licenses, uh, it works very well. You know, there's an attractive gas market, pricing is good, costs are good. Um, there's obviously a, a well-established industry there, uh, but growth in Italy is challenging um, for, for EMP. You know, it's very slow moving. It can be done, yeah. but it's it's got its peculiar challenges. I think in Southeast Asia, the the board of of Coro saw an opportunity to go to a market where you know you get very strong GDP growth rates underpinning big energy demand. Yeah. And if you couple that with a supply shortage, um, particularly in gas. Yeah. Um, you, you have a dynamic where you know, you've got upward pressure on gas prices and governments that are actively supportive of uh, EMP um, coming into the country and investing and, and clearly these countries also have a long history of, of EMP investment yeah. and largely because of their maturity um, the larger companies are either exiting or divesting or reducing their positions and it has freed up its space for smaller independent EMP companies. Yeah. And that's really the gap um, that I think the, the, the Coro yeah, board see. Yeah, looking to fill. So you announced on Monday this transformational deal um, in Southeast Asia. Um, I'd like to go into some detail about it. So if you give us an, an, an idea of what it is you bought, then we can talk about what the Blengo gas field is and how you yes. and so on. Yeah, well, I guess the, the context, as I was talking about, was, was the, the opportunity of the market. Um, when you look at the, what's going to be needed in that part of the world, it comes from two areas to fill the supply-demand gap. It's, it's new discoveries and it's commercializing existing discoveries. So, you know, we have the choice of taking our capital and putting it into exploration or putting it to work with, in discovered resource. And in this instance, you know, we are we're spending $12 million as a combination of cash and shares. Uh, but acquiring, uh, you know, 152 BCF of gas that, that's already appraised um, and ready for development. And so, uh, you know, relative to exploration risk, we feel that's very good value. And, and certainly we can, we can talk about the value of the, yeah. the asset itself, but um, this is strongly a value accretive for, for our shareholders. So this is the Lengo gas field, um, and you pay 12 million dollars for it. Well, Plus or minus, yeah. yes. And you've, got, you've, you've done that split between cash and shares. Yes. Just to, to confirm Yes, that. correct. So we're, we're using, uh, and as you'll see, you know, we see this as um, underpinning uh, you know, a lot of value within, within Coro. So we're using uh, equity in part because, you know, we have precious cash resources yeah. that we want to try and preserve. Uh, and in part, we have to use um, cash for, for, for the transaction um, for AWE, the main seller. Um, the gas field itself, uh, if yeah. I can talk about that, yes, uh, please, the asset, yeah, yeah. Uh, is, um, it's in the East Java Basin. So it's, yeah. it's in shallow water, about 60 metres. It's a carbonate reservoir. Yeah. It's very shallow gas. This is at right. 700 metres oh, depth right. yeah, below, yeah. below the yeah. mud line. So, uh, but it's got a big uh, gas column, about 80 metre gas column. Yeah. Um, carbonate, as I mentioned, so they're called the Kujun cal carbonates, uh, yeah. the Miocene age. Um, very common reservoir in the basin. So uh, reasonably well understood. Uh, what I like about um, this asset is I see it as being quite solid in terms of its resources. You yeah, know, I don't yeah. think we're going to get a, a, down, a, a downside surprise in terms of the technicals. Yeah. The reason for that is 
it stands out on seismic yes. very <laughs> clearly, uh, like the proverbial yeah. whatever. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, so we can see on site on the 3D uh, where the gas is located. Um, in terms of the appraisal, it's been drilled on the crest and on the flank of the structure. Right. And we've seen very good continuity in the reservoir units, so, so common reservoir, obviously, yeah. common gas water contact, common gas composition, you know, very well defined on 3D. So, I, yeah. I, you know, I don't see us uh, don't, getting, no, a, getting no. a nasty surprise. So, and you, so you've got a, a time scale of development. You've got a platform and what, four wells yeah. of it. And, uh... That's right. The, the, the wells, um, the, the test, the, you know, they flow at about 20 million standard cubic feet a day in the, in the meaty mm. bits of the reservoir. Yeah. Um, the, the forecast, or what we're envisaging here in terms of the development that's been approved by the Indonesians already, is a small unmanned platform for uh, deviated wells to produce a uh, plateau 70 million standard cubic feet a day. Yeah. And we'll have 42.5% of it. Uh, we then pipe that gas back to shore, uh, where it gets uh, processed. And the level of processing depends on uh, how much of the CO2 we want to take out, because the yeah. gas has 12% CO2. Yeah. That's quite low, or, is, but, but in, in more than you'd want, but low yes, by regional standards. That's low by East Java standards. Um, roughly speaking, the deeper the reservoir, the higher the levels of CO2, and we're very yeah. shallow here. So yeah. we're interested in shallow, um, shallow reservoirs and, and prospects that are shallow round yeah, yeah, about yeah, the field, yeah. of course. Um, but certainly 12% CO2 doesn't prevent you marketing the gas at all. Uh, and when we come back to talk about the gas yeah. sales agreement, we'll talk about that, but, but you can strip it out for yes, people yes. who want, want, yeah, want none yeah. at all. So reserves and production, production will be 2020, did I hear you say? Yeah. Um, yeah, probably, yeah, we'll get, we'll get on stream, I'd imagine, in 2020. Yeah. Um, probably first full year on plateau in, in 2021 is what we um, imagine. Um, yeah. And yeah, healthy gas market, a relatively simple, straightforward um, development. Yeah. And one of the, you know, this field was found in 2008. Uh, and one of the features, and one of the things I like about Southeast Asia yeah. for independent EMPs, is m most of these um, discoveries were made a long time ago by other people. Yeah. And most of them are developed by new people who, yes. <laughs> who come along, pick yeah. them up yeah. at quite modest prices, yeah. and, can, and can take them away and do things yeah. with them. So you said there wasn't likely to be very much downside, which I like the sound of. Is yeah. there a bit of exploration upside nearby? Or, um, uh, yes, is that, there is. Yeah. It, it's not actually within the PSC. Yeah. The PSC is quite yeah. uh, defined, but certainly in the basin near the field, yes, there is, yeah. uh, we know which we are looking at, um, to add a little bit of exploration spice to it. And I like that model of, for exploration yeah. of exploring around yeah. discoveries where you can it tie in quickly, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. certainly the play is well understood. And your partners there are, it's a slightly complicated one, isn't it? Because <laughs> somebody came in and then didn't continue, yeah. uh, and it's yeah, high oil and AWE. Uh. Correct. So, so the deal itself, you know, has some complexity to it. And it's a, yeah. th it's a tripartite deal. So, right. so, you know, it's difficult enough to do a deal with two of you. <laughs> when you have a third one. Yeah. Um, but they, you know, everyone wants to get to the same place at the end of the day. And it was a deal between a private company, High Oil, and AWE, who's an Australian yeah. uh, player. Uh, which was struck in 2016 and didn't close. Yeah. And, it, you know, it, it went sideways and it kind of stalled. And the Indonesians wanted the deal to complete. I yeah. think high, everyone wanted the deal to complete, but they couldn't. Yeah. So we've been able to reverse that deal and replace uh, high oil with Coro, effectively, and now would bring the deal to completion. Yeah, so. um, yeah. Now, gas sales. Yes. Uh, there's a gas sales agreement, sort of, that, that's your first job to do. Yeah. But there is also, you know, there's already... You know, agreement in place for various yeah, opportunities. There, there is um, East Java is is quite an industrial zone. It's, it's got a the area of Gresik, which is where we come ashore. Yeah. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of industry going on there, particularly petrochemicals, also yeah. power generation, and um, refining. Yeah. Um, so we see a number of different buyers for the gas, and indeed, yeah. uh, I think as you mentioned, um, a memorandum of understanding's already been signed yeah. by one of them for some of the gas. Um, but the operator is, is, is chasing more. There's also the opportunity to take the gas to uh, neighbouring fields where they have a shortfall of whether they need to supply. You know, right, they're contractually yeah, obliged yeah, to supply yeah, gas yeah, and they right, can't. Yeah, yeah. So we have other operators, you know, who are interested in the gas <laughs> as well. So all of that helps with the pricing. Um, yeah. And, you know, we, we're talking about a range between 550 to 8 you know, um, I think we've been pretty conservative yeah. with our with, with yeah. our, our range yeah. there. But even so, when we look at the valuation, you know, that's that's pretty good for us. Yeah, and your costs are quite low, actually, aren't they? I mean, in terms of you know, you've got opex and your your in initial cost. 
you know, your office costs, that puts you in at just over a dollar, is that right? Or? Yeah, so in, in MMBTU terms, of so units of, 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 of calorific power generation, potentially, if you like, which is not what I normally work in, I have to tell you. <laughs> but we are, you know, if we, if we start at the gas price and go backwards, so we're talking about 550 to $8 for yeah. an MMBTU for the gas. Um, to, to run the, the field at Plateau will cost you about $1.10, yeah. uh, and to develop it will cost you about $1, and we bought it for $0.10. Cents. So, yeah, so, so yeah. we have a large Lots margin. And, and, the, and the, uh, the, the fiscal system in the, in the area? Yeah, it's a production sharing contract, yeah. which um, you know was was put together back in uh, two thousand and three. So it's got you know yeah. until twenty thirty three to run. Yeah. So we've got a, a nice long life on it. Um, for gas, it's attractive, uh, you know, in terms of the contractor split with the government. Yeah. And one of the features we're highlighting in this uh, deal is that there is a cost pool um, of a hundred million dollars. So yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, yeah. Well, what, cost, it, is it, or some cost. Yeah. So people, you know, we've had a lot of questions about it, and it's worth just dwelling on that yeah, for, yeah. for for uh, one second. But um, effectively, the um, other other people have spent money in this license, mm. and they've drilled wells and, and shot three D. Yeah. And of course, that cost, as a as an investor, <coughs> a contractor in Indonesia, you are entitled to recover before you start splitting uh, with the government. And that, that's how the petroleum uh, yeah. production uh, sharing contract works. Yeah. And so we can recover, the, 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 the group will recover the 100 million, and then we will be looking at, yeah. at splitting with the government. So um, once we're on stream, uh, the revenue will flow for, to recover that cost before we get into the place where we're having to split and start paying tax. Yeah. So it, it makes the economics extremely attractive yeah. for us. And uh, it's interesting, I mean, that, that I'm assuming that this dwarfs uh, the Italian part of, of Coro and, and effectively, you know, I've heard you being sort of asked about it, but I mean, there are advantages to having that to turn inside because of your expertise. Yeah. Uh, th this leads me on to ask you about the fact that, you know, independents in the area are not few and far between, but um, the, the smaller companies find mm. it difficult to get in. I saw you answering a question yesterday saying, you know, we've got the fact we've got experience and, and, and background and so on. Um, I presume this means it's the beginning of a, 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 a lot of uh, <laughs> fast growing, uh, a lot of work in the area and more acquisitions. Isn't it? Well, we'd certainly hope so. I mean, I think in uh, Indonesia there are um, a number of smaller players. They, they tend to be more domestic players um, yeah. than perhaps new entrants coming from, from outside. Uh, I think the, the area we particularly like is Malaysia. You know, we, we, yeah. We've highlighted that as a place we like for smaller companies. And that is the one where it is quite difficult to get in yeah. and where having the Italian platform is very useful. Yeah, right, that's where it comes in. Yeah, yeah. And, and the Malaysians have been very impressed with what we've shown them, with what, yeah. what we've done in Italy, you know, where we are an operator. We have developed gas fields. We've, we've drilled well successfully with you know, very good HSE stats. And, and they that, like yeah, that. And that would be less buying companies or acreage and more getting in on uh, a license round, is that correct? Yes, correct. I mean, in, in Malaysia, there is, um, crudely speaking, and I'm yes. oversimplifying wildly yeah, yeah. here, no, no. But, but Malaysia is more of a uh, dealing with the government for awards. And in that, you can pick up um, licenses with discovered resource on that you can explore yeah. and exploit as well. So that fits our model very well. Um, Indonesia is more about A and D, where yeah. there is a bigger market. There's there's more activity on that yeah. front, but um, we we probably wouldn't be looking for the Indonesians to award us blocks. We can, but that's quite a long drawn out process. So you want to you want to try and get a really balanced sort of number of businesses where you 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 maybe like this one. You've bought the business. You get some uh, something in a license round. Uh, you get some production straight away, yep. some longer term production, and then maybe a bit of exploration into the into the bargain as well. Yes, correct. I mean, I like that model of, of a mix of, yeah. of uh, you know, we want some exploration sizzle. I think we all we all you know like exploration and can see it can add huge yeah. value, um, but if it's done sensibly and coherently yeah. with the rest of the portfolio. And we also like, I mean, some production would be great to give it a bit of uh, yeah. ballast. In the portfolio too, and you, and you were saying um, bef before we came in that uh, the area has been fairly starved of investment. It, yes, does that make life <laughs> easier for you, or uh, yeah, very uh, much so. Um, it, yeah, in, in in the three years since we sold Salamander, um, very little's happened in in Southeast Asia, and and we, you know, we've I, I obviously I go travel to the region quite frequently. Yeah. And you know a lot of these things have been like this deal, you know, which has, has been yeah. sitting there since 2016 without anything happening. Yeah. 
Um, and yet, you know, you, you can, there are very value accretive deals to be yeah. done, but, but without capital, and certainly private equity is not interested yeah. in Southeast Asia, yeah. frightens them. You just them. need to get the deals across the line, which I yes. think are quite tricky yeah. in, that, in that part of the world. And certainly the public, yeah. public markets are now getting, waking up to, to Southeast Asia, and certainly we've seen Jadestone yeah. uh, raise money, we've seen Ophir make acquisitions, and, yeah. um, uh, and one or two other things yeah. locally in the local markets which have um, come to the fore as well. Good. When Coro was uh, started, probably before your time, it was financed for, I think, $18 million of finance and some two or three supportive shareholders. Yes. And you've used some of the cash and uh, you're going to use shares. Yes. Uh, does that, where does that leave you in terms of, you know, will your finance part of this or will you ex further financing this can be done by debt? Reserve based lending and so on. How does that leave Coro's finance yeah. overall? Well, certainly we wouldn't look to be financing a development of Gasfield uh, um, no. directly off for equity. That would be, right, uh, right. you know, that wouldn't be a sensible thing to do at all. Um, fortunately enough, the the reserve based lending um, uh, banks, which you mentioned, are very much open for business in Southeast Asia. So yeah. th there is a a, a well uh, worked path of of lenders who like this sort of project and they're, they're very happy to finance it. In the small cap sector, we've also seen the bond market open yeah. um, for people for, for this sort of thing. Um, so yeah, we would be looking to debt finance yeah. um, the vast majority of this. Um, absolutely, I think also you know other more innovative forms of financing are around that we can yeah. combine with. Um, you know, you, you'll have heard of people talk about vendor financing for yeah. a lot of things. Yeah, absolutely. And and of course you so you can use the you know with the coros uh, your cor uh, as your base. You can use that with the equity and some of the cash to gear up yes. and then be able to debt yeah. finance and then bring yes. in more and more deals. So. Absolutely. And, yeah. and, I, and I think you know, it's sensible for um, small cap companies to, to take this approach. Clearly, we don't want to over lever, which is we, no. we saw what happened yeah. uh, you know, yeah. in, in the last few years with that. But um, it's actually a sensible thing to do and, and certainly mm. would be very inefficient if we didn't. Yeah. So just briefly in terms of management, which I always like to have a quick word about. I mean, you're here yep. and there and everywhere, <laughs> and you've got uh, CFO in London, yep. modest uh, uh, operations in London by, by the sounds of it, and a lot of your people out in the, in the East, is that right? Uh, we have a team out in Asia who, you know, a, a technical team. Um, we're augmenting that with some commercial um, people. But um, really, uh, Milan, you know, where we, we have yeah, our yeah. office in, in Italy is where most of the people sit, actually. Yeah. And, and they're obviously managing and running those fields out in the Boat yeah. Valley. Um, but, yeah, so we're in sort of three jurisdictions yeah. at the moment. But here we are quite small. And costs are low. Uh, costs are pretty low. <laughs> um, uh, and, yeah, I think as we, as we grow, we would look to establish um, a more permanent base out in Asia. But yeah. we'll probably wait for the next deal for that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Time is uh, running out, I'm afraid, uh, James, but and uh, I'd just really like to ask you to sort of finish the, the process by saying, you know, I'd love, I always ask the same question, but it's, you know, how, how do you see the company in 12 to 18 months' time? You know, you've, you've started very quickly, you, you know, you've obviously had a lot to do, um, and it's going to be a very fast-moving process. Where do you see it in, in the next year and a half? Yes, well, I, I really, uh, I'm, I'm working towards building a portfolio of these projects in, in Indonesia, Malaysia, possibly Vietnam, but Southeast Asia, where we don't want to overstretch ourselves, but I think um, two or three hubs of yeah. activity uh, where we get a balance of, the, of production, you know, some yeah. development, and I really want some exploration spice into the story too. Um, to keep it interesting and to you know to help accrete value and, and I'd like to buy those at, at yeah. very good prices. I thought I detected that uh, exploration spice. I knew I'd get it out of you at the end. Uh, James, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you. Uh, today's Thanks, CEO interview has been with uh, James Menzies, who's the CEO of Coro Energy. It's been delightful to have him on board. And uh, from me, Malcolm Graham Wood on Core TV, Core Finance TV. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye now.